Freelancers, there's going to come a time when you're going to find yourself needing to reach out to a principal flute player that you don't know for the most common reasons are to because you want to be on their sub list of the orchestra that they play in or you want to get a one-off lesson or maybe a few lessons specifically to work on um, excerpts for an upcoming audition. The most important thing I think in constructing your email is to keep it short and to the point. Do not ramble on about your backstory or about how much you love their playing or start name dropping or any of that. None of that's necessary. The flute player reading your email knows what you want and is more likely to respond if they don't have to read through paragraphs of unnecessary information. As an example <clears throat> of how I would construct and how I have in the past written an email, this is just as an example. Dear, you know, principal flute player, whatever their name is. My name is whatever, and I am a professional flute player. I have professional in parentheses, just it's optional. It just might depend on the situation if you want the person to know that you are a professional player, if you think that might make Make a difference but anyways a uh, flute player in the Los Angeles area just for an example I am preparing for an upcoming orchestra audition and would love to get a lesson with you on my excerpts if this is a possibility what are your rates and availability I look forward to hearing from you etc and make sure you leave your contact information like I said the most important thing is to be straight to the point so when you say I am preparing for an upcoming orchestra audition and would like to get a lesson with you on my excerpts. That is your straight to the point sentence. Um, so obviously this example is for if you're seeking out a lesson with a principal flute player to have them listen to your excerpts. Um, but it could be for, you know, you can just change it up a little bit. If you're seeking out the principal flute player just to play for them, to be considered on their sub list, you can say that um, as your to the point sentence. Like you can say, I am a professional flute player in the whatever area, and then say, I am interested in playing for you to be considered on your sub list. That's your point. Flute players or any musician probably that you're corresponding with that it has a full-time orchestra job, um, they don't need to uh, make connections with people or need to necessarily try and help you out. I mean, they might, but they really, really appreciate efficiency of correspondence because they don't have time to, they don't have time and they don't need to. Um, we'll just say it that way. So as you can see from the example I gave, the, the letter itself is not overly formatted like for a cover letter, for a job application or something like that. You know, so it can be casual, but yet professional. And casual meaning I'm talking to this person from as one flute player to another flute player. I don't mean casual like definitely do not use texting abbreviations or all small caps in this correspondence. You're talking with someone with whom you need to show respect and also you need to show that you have some kind of professional professional sense. <laughs> As I've said in, in previous videos, you can make it casual, but not stupid. So maybe just keep that in mind. But another way to think of getting to the point is to make sure you list the specifics of why you want this lesson to this principal flute player. Because if you're contacting a principal flute player of a full-time orchestra, I'm assuming in this video for these purposes that you're not just looking for a teacher, like a regular weekly teacher. We're talking contacting a principal flute player for specific reasons. You wanna be on their sub list or you wanna have one or two lessons with them. So in your email, um, you know, I called it the to the point sentence. I think I referred to it as. Um, to have the specifics in there, like so that the reader, the principal flute player, knows exactly what you're after. The specifics are what you want the lesson to be on. Excerpts for an audition, or just excerpts, whatever, something specific. Or if you're asking, I wanna come play for you to be considered on your sub list, that's implied that you're gonna come with something prepared that you're gonna play for them. What I'm trying to get at here is the principal flute player does not in any way want to feel like they have to prepare 
to um, give a lesson to you. They will sit there and listen to you play whatever it is you've come to play, probably. You know, it's likely they'll be like, sure, you know, come, come play. I'll tell you what I can. I'll give you the advice that I have. But if they get the impression that they're gonna have to prepare to come up with something to do with you in this lesson, you're not gonna get a response. And speaking of no response, this can happen quite a bit where you reach out to this principal flute player and you, you hear nothing back. What do you do? You know, it's it's tricky situation because being a freelancer, you need to be proactive, you need to be assertive, you need to seek people out, you need to do all this stuff on your own. Um, but you also, it's a very tricky game because you cannot be overly any of those things or you're going to rub, you can rub somebody the wrong way and completely ruin your chances of ever subbing in their orchestra, you know, whatever. So anyway, if you do not hear anything from them, after your first email, I would give it four days to a week. I'd say a week just to be safe. And then after a week, I would reply or respond one more time with another email saying, I emailed you before, actually, no. So this has to be just right because you don't want to be like, I emailed you before, hello, is anybody there? <laughs> you know, you don't want to give off that impression and you cannot use emojis or say LOL, like you, you cannot do that. So actually I would, now that I've said this out loud, I probably, probably would just say my same email, maybe with one or two things different um, and just send it again, just like asking the same thing. Or I guess you could say, I sent an email before, but I'm not sure if you got it. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not sure about that, but I just to be safe, I would just send the exact same email again um, after a week has gone by. And then, you know, that's their second chance to respond to you. If they see it the second time and they truly didn't get it the first time, you know, then, then this is their time to respond. Or if um, what often happens is they may have gotten your email and read it and was like, oh yeah, you know, thinking like, I'll get back to them sometime, but then they forget. Like I said before, they don't need to get back to you. They don't need to network. They don't need to do anything. So oftentimes you have to kind of be proactive in getting them to respond to you. But having said that, I would respond just one more time after that week. And then if they don't respond to you after that, it's just, it's just done. You cannot do anything about it. You're just gonna have to find somebody else. Another thing to consider, and uh, this is something you can ask your colleagues or other people that might know personally this particular principal flute player like what are they like do they never respond to emails do they just never give lessons are they kind of like weird you know they, there's all kinds of personalities out there you might get some information to decide if you want to try to pursue contacting them again I hope that helps a little bit in just clarifying how you should construct your email. If anyone has any other questions or um, about clarifying anything of what I've said or any other questions at all, please put it down in the comments. I will for sure get back to you. This is a tricky um, thing in knowing how to correspond with um, a stranger, a principal flute player to, to make a connection and please hit subscribe uh, in this channel. I have lots of videos such as this one going over details about things like how to contact principal flute player, how to network, stage etiquette, just all the, the details of having a freelancer live that are never, hardly ever discussed um, like in college or music school. Good luck with your fluting, your auditions, whatever you've got going on, and I will see you at the next video.